This is the Inter Protocol April Community Call. This is all a community call number 11 for us. We're closing in on that magic dozen mark. Uh, I am Rick Shreves from the DCF, the Decentralized Cooperation Foundation. Uh, I'll be hosting today's call together with Fred from the DCF. Fred, you want to say hi? Greetings, everyone. Thanks for joining. We've got a number of guests today. We've got uh, Yusuf Amrani, who is joining us to talk about all things Economic Committee. Uh, Roland Grouse is joining us from Agoric to talk about product and the exciting things that are coming down the pipe for Inner Protocol. And JD, as in JD Lorax from Agoric, is joining us as well to talk about community matters and what's happening around the Inner Protocol community this month. So thank you to all of our speakers. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, we will try to keep the call to 30 minutes, but there's some good content today. So if it runs a little longer, um, I'm okay with that too. And of course, there's always time for questions. Uh, if you've got a question or a comment, put up your hand and either Fred or I will bring you up here on the stage so you can speak and uh, we will go from there. So I think without further ado, um, Fred, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Talk to us about what's been happening within our protocol since our last community call. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, as you mentioned, there's uh, a lot of uh, things going on and we have Roland, JD, and Yusuf, three people. So I'm gonna keep it, the introduction fairly short today and just talk about a couple of, of events going on. Uh, if you participated in some of our um, tasks that were going on Twitter and Discord, the system that we were using, Crew3, is now called Zeely. So if you see Zeely.io instead of Crew3, it's the same thing. And the first set of tasks are completed, but there's new ones coming up. So check into that. The other thing that happened uh, real recently is IST is now on ShadeSwap as a pool with Silk with incentives. So if you're interested in entering a, a pool with some uh, of your uh, IST, there's a great way of, of doing that. And since we have three guests, I'd like to turn it over to Roland to kick us off talking about uh, product and, and where uh, Inner Protocol is, is going over the next couple of months. So, Roland? Hey, hey everyone, and thanks, Fred. Um, so, uh, as, as you all uh, on this call likely know, the next big release from the Agoric side is our Mainnet 1B release, which, which really brings a whole bunch of platform features uh, up, up into the live system and will sort of help with scalability, will help with contract upgrade, will uh, bring bring a bunch of capabilities that will sort of enable complex DeFi uh, to, to flourish on Agoric. And the Vault's launch is happening at the same time. And so along with the mainnet 1B release, the contracts for Vault's, liquidation, reserve, uh, the Oracle network, all of that is coming together at the same time to, to really showcase those, those new platform capabilities and for the inter-protocol community to uh, uh, allow you to use Vault's, which I, I know everyone is, is keen and eager to hear about. So just to give a, a quick status on that, we are right now uh, actually today uh, the devnet is coming together uh, that would include both the vaults contracts and uh, the oracle network for the first end-to-end -end test of all uh, the sort of full flow of pricing into the vault system uh, and so vaults have been undergoing testing functional testing on their own for quite a while uh, and similarly simple simply staking has been driving testing of the oracle network uh, on their own network for a while. Uh, this is the first end-to-end -end piece that uh, is coming together. And uh, we're, we're really excited to have a long-lived persistent test net where uh, vaults can be tested. Um, alongside that, uh, the, the really big piece for uh, vault stability is a, a, a robust liquidation mechanism. And so liquidation has gone through functional testing over the last several weeks. Um, and we are now testing uh, the ability to bid on liquidation auctions. And so Agoric is writing a testing tool uh, that would show how you could bid through a CLI on, on liquidation auctions. And we're starting to get validation from third parties that they understand how it works. And so if one of you on the call would love to bid on liquidations, I think likely in the next week we'll be in a place where uh, we can bring you in, run a liquidation test, make sure that you understand how it works and it would be a big opportunity likely uh, for anyone interested in taking advantage of that um, uh, moving forward. So 
So please do reach out. Um, the, the liquidation mechanism, as, as many of you likely know, is an auction that declines in price over time, uh, sort of similar to how MakerDAO works. Uh, and it accepts bids in two, two different methods. One is by price. So say you want to buy Adam at $9, you can put uh, a liquidation bid in for a certain amount of IST at $9, and it will live until you either cancel it or it gets filled. Um, or you can put a bid in for a discount from the Oracle price at the start of liquidation, which um, is sort of, many of you may know from a model similar to Kujira, or I think a few other folks have discussed that uh, in, in the crypto ecosystem. Um, the, the auction will accept either of those, and uh, at the start of the, the auction, we'll, we'll calculate the Oracle price, and then we'll use that for the discount. So um, again, really would love to dig that. Uh, dig in deeper with anyone who thinks they might want to be bidding on liquidations and to run through the testing tool, make sure that you're able to get that set up on your system and test it on your own. Um, so if that's something that you'd like hand holding with and just to be prepared, please do reach out. Um, so with that, we really are racing towards being done with this release. Um, and I don't think I've gotten authorization to give a date, but uh, we're looking we're looking for that to be quite imminent. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Fred, but uh, happy to take questions either now or later on the call. Great. Thanks, Roland. That's really exciting to see both of these come together at uh, almost exactly the same time. Next, we're going to talk with JD. And JD, thanks for coming up as your first experience as uh, part of Agoric. And tell us what's going on with the community. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, it's nice to make my introduction to the inter-protocol community. Um, and so yeah, today I wanted to just give an update uh, about some matters that came up in the forum. Uh, the uh, Agorix forum, uh, there was a discussion started a little while ago, a couple of weeks now, by a community member who goes by Red Rabbit. Uh, and the discussion was to enable superfluid staking for IST and Osmo. And initially they were just seeking some interest from how does the Agoric community feel about it. And after going over some some of the metrics of the pools, they've since progressed that to the Osmosis Governance Forum. And so there is now a pre-proposal discussion to adopt uh, both IST and build as superfluid pools. And so just to go over, uh, so that's a little bit of the context and just to go over some of the uh, details here for those that don't know, superfluid staking is a novel staking mechanism that's unique to osmosis that allows the staking of osmo that is locked into liquidity pools and so with that uh, uh, it recognizes the uh, a portion of osmo tokens in a ga in the gam uh, g a m m l p tokens uh, for various pools and right now there's uh, a number of them from usdc uh, Adam uh, uh, and numerous others. And so the aim out of this is to get uh, IST recognized. This would be great to have it recognized as a key stable token in the interchain. And it would show sort of a sign of trust between the Osmosis community and the Agoric community as they feel safe to have the um, uh, both interstable token and the build token to be contributing to the security of their chain. And so, uh, yeah, right now that discussion is ongoing. There's also, uh, uh, it was brought up to adopt uh, IST as a fee token on Osmosis. I don't know, I don't think that's gonna be going up as a proposal just yet, but uh, it was brought up on, at the end of the, um, at the end of the very comprehensive posts shared by Red Rabbit. And then there has been a little bit of just uh, back and forth with other uh, community members in Osmosis, uh, just going over some of the details of the proposal. But it does sound like one of the validators is willing to and interested in moving this forward to a proposal fairly soon. So uh, yeah, just exciting to see, uh, um, from my view, it's really exciting to see uh, this sort of initiative coming, it stemmed from the community directly. It was just a community member who thought to themselves, I want to see IST as a superfluid pool and moved ahead with creating the discussion and now moved it into the proposal stage. So uh, pretty exciting stuff to see. And I'm gonna keep following along as the discussion progresses and hopefully we see a proposal come up soon. 
Great. <clears throat> Great. Thanks for that, JD. So, um, Sorry, can I jump in for a sec? I was going to say, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, a couple of things. First off, uh, hats off or a hat tip to Red Rabbit for putting forward a really seriously detailed, really thoughtful uh, suggestion, proposal, and starting this discussions in the community. Uh, really impressive to see. And, and second, JD, uh, you should tell this crew uh, what it is you do and uh, what sort of stuff we can expect to, to see from you going forward. Yeah, uh, so I, I joined Agoric a couple of months ago as a uh, uh, technical program manager, and I'm focused on community operations. So you'll see me around the discourse forum, community.agoric.com. Uh, you'll find me in Discord and doing things like coordinating the uh, DevNet uh, updates, for example, that Roland mentioned that's going on. We're uh, working around the, uh, I'm working with the messaging around that and helping to keep everybody up to date. And I'm also working on some things like the delegation program, which I talked about in the recent Agoric community call. And basically all things community, you'll find me in the uh, channels, uh, Telegram, Discord, Discourse. And, uh, and so, yeah, that, that's really what I'll be, uh, the areas that I'll be focused on. And I kind of uh, work across the various teams. So I, I know a little bit about a lot, a lot that's going on. <laughs> that, that sounds like a lot of us, uh, a little bit about a lot. Hey, thanks. It's really good to have you here, and it's really good to see uh, Agoric investing more resources into community. So uh, great stuff, J.D. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you in the future. Uh, and Fred, I interrupted you, so so back to you, Fred. Oh, no problem. Thanks, Rick. I was just going to say that <clears throat> there was, might be some questions about what was uh, just presented, and everyone is invited to raise their hand during the call, and at the end, we will have time for some questions. We're going along pretty good. So with that, let's go ahead and bring Yusuf up. He's no a new person to this call. He's been on here before. And Yusuf, tell us what's going on with the Economic Committee. Hey, Fred, Rick, thanks for, uh, for having us. Uh, so yeah, hey, everyone. Uh, so the Econ Committee members, uh, we finally got to our meet in Amsterdam late March, uh, early uh, April. And uh, Rick, uh, Bill uh, from Agoric, and uh, and Jesse were also there. So it was we got a pretty good time together. Uh, you know, the, the offsite went really well, and we we all left Amsterdam satisfied with what we achieved uh, as a team. You know, whether we talk about bonding with each other, which I think is is key in uh, you know just building the, the a team and uh, a sense of a sense of belonging. Uh, or, you know, getting prepared for the next growth stage of IC uh, with the launch of Vols. I think it's a, it's a decisive uh, step for, for the EC and for Inter-Protocol as a, as a stable coin. Um, so we got to spend uh, three days. Uh, we had three working days together, three full working days. Um, so one of the members of the EC, uh, the Econ Committee, is, uh, is Thibault. Uh, and he lives in Amsterdam, so he was kind enough to uh, book a room for us at the uh, University of Amsterdam for three full days. Um, yeah, so basically, the, 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 I'll just break down uh, real quick what the EC has been up to for these three days. So on day one, uh, what we did is uh, every econ committee member presented a topic uh, in relationship to his skills, uh, on day two, we did the complete mapping of all risks and, you know, come up with also with appropriate response scenarios. So we've identified as a team three major uh, uh, types of risk. So first one is technical, uh, for example, uh, a failure of, uh, of uh, vaults uh, with the liquidation engine. The second one is economical and the third one is legal. So anything that does that deal with the with regulation and, uh, and, and, and policy. And on the last day, uh, we did a complete mapping uh, of all risks and appropriate response scenario. I think that was the, uh, the, the most exciting uh, thing we did during the, the, that, that, uh, that work session. So uh, yeah, we, we, on, on day three, we, we also like, got a comprehensive training on basic and advanced security practices 
uh, by Jesse. So uh, we covered a few topics. So key management, uh, password management, and uh, and privacy. And at the end of day three, we also spent a few hours uh, doing simulation around potential incidents and how the, the econ committee uh, responds to them. Uh, it was a lot of fun, to be honest, very practical matter. Uh, and so we've decided that going forward, uh, we also incorporate to our weekly meetings a slot where we practice incident response uh, with Jesse. So every week we'll take 10, 15 minutes and just practice. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it. Uh, maybe you guys have questions on uh, what is going on with the Econ Committee? Hey, I'll just jump in and, and say I was fortunate enough to be able to attend that retreat, and it was it was really, really productive and really good to see. I mean, just the ability to, to be face-to-face -face with everybody and see the way that everyone on the Economic Committee thinks about approaching problems, uh, what everyone's various uh, philosophies are that are driving their decision-making process, and, and watching that group uh, synthesize all of that and, and work together was really quite impressive. And it's a really good group. There's a lot of skills. There's a lot of expertise in that group. Uh, there were some very thoughtful discussions uh, about this very fluid regulatory market that we're in. Uh, there were some very thoughtful discussions about the role of the EC relative to the broader inter-protocol community and how the EC really needs to focus on, on IST as opposed to driving inter-protocol strategy, uh, you know, keeping an eye on... Uh, shifting market conditions and, and adding a layer of resilience to IST is, is really that viewed role for the EC. And it was great to see all of that uh, come together in, in sort of a philosophy that we're going to see reflected in the way that the Economic Committee interacts with this asset in the future. So it was a super great event. And just for those of you who are curious out there, um, this was paid for out of the budget that the community had designated for the Economic Committee. Uh, we expect this to be probably an annual event based on, on how well this one went. Uh, as you know, uh, the economic committees are uh, members are elected to a term and there will, of course, be turnover in that every year. And so we will need to get together, look at security practices, make sure everybody's trained on incident response and, and we all stay in a good uh, in step and in a good functional format. So, you know, super positive and, and thank you to the EC members for, for inviting me. It was, it was really awesome. Um, Great. Well, speaking of events, Rick, I hear there's a couple of things coming up that you need to tell us about. And thanks for the water <laughs> roll today. I appreciate that. Nice, nice segue, Fred. Yes, uh, next week we've got Consensus. It's back again in Austin, Texas again this year. And that's happening from April 26 to 28. Um, I will be attending uh, on behalf of DCF and InterProtocol. Uh, Dean Triple is there and will be speaking. Dean, CEO of Agoric and original OG in this space. Uh, a few other members of the Agoric crew will be present as well. Definitely drop by, uh, drop us a note on, on Twitter or on Discord. Let us know if you're there and you want to meet. Uh, we are trying to fill up our appointments calendars right now. We will not be, and Agoric will not be uh, hosting a booth this year, but we'll definitely be visible. And then looking a little further down the calendar at events, uh, the first week of June is the Gateway event in Prague. Um, definitely was a lot of excitement around that event last year. I heard a lot of good things. I didn't get to go. I'm looking forward to going this year. Uh, there will be a big Agoric presence, a big inner protocol presence there as well. So again, uh, if you are going and you want to connect with us, drop us a note in one of our shared channels and we will make the time. Um, and uh, one final thing, and then I'll just pause for questions is, you know, if you do have any questions about what's happening with IST or inner protocol, you know, drop by our Discord, drop by Discourse, interact with us there. We do watch that. Uh, we're happy to answer questions and interact with the community. It's, it's all about you guys. We want to keep you informed. And we want, more importantly, we want your input and your engagement. So do we have any questions at this point in time? We're down to our last few minutes here. I don't see any hands raised at this point. You know, one thing that I'll plant a seed about is, you know, we're in this incredibly dynamic uh, regulatory market that's happening right now. 
uh, between what we're seeing happening with the SEC and the other U.S.-based entities and, of course, the uh, European Parliament with the MECA legislation. I, I don't know how many people saw in the news, but that was endorsed. So we can expect MECA to be coming down the pipe for enforcement probably Q3 of 2024. Um, I, I think it would be good for us at some point in time in the near future on one of these community calls uh, to pull in a few of uh, the experts that are within our community and have a talk about regulations and what's happening with the stablecoin world. Uh, I think that there would be a lot of people who'd be interested in hearing that content, uh, and it would be good to help educate the market about what is going on. So that's that's just planting a seed for a future discussion. Uh, if anybody is interested in such things, definitely let us know. Great. Thanks for that, Rick. And with that, I don't see any additional hands raised. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. Any final okay. thoughts? All right, fair enough. Any final comments from uh, Yusuf, JD, Roland? Uh, just one quick one from me to uh, put an emphasis on the fact that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any ideas for InterProtocol, please bring them to the forum, uh, community.agoric.com. That's the discourse forum. There's an InterProtocol category. And uh, we'd just all love to see uh, th those kinds of discussions happening there. And then I'll, I'll put one emphasis on, again, uh, if you are interested in testing liquidation, please please reach out to me. We've got a testing tool. would love to have more third parties use it, make sure that it's understandable. So uh, reach out in Discord or on, on Twitter or find me anywhere. Uh, looking forward to it. Thanks. Yeah, and I also wanted to say a few words about the process to uh, onboard new collateral. So the, the Econ Committee is actively working on it. Uh, there are multiple interdependencies we need to factor in. Uh, but yeah, we have something to announce uh, uh, in the next few weeks. Excellent, Yusuf. That's a great one. Thanks for remembering that. Uh, I intended to mention it and completely spaced it out. Uh, we did have one person put up their hand, and I brought them up to the stage here. I don't know how to uh, pronounce your username, so I'm just going to hand it over to you, TG. Okay. There you go. Hello. Uh, hello to everyone. I receive you. I joined here with my account, uh, Agrep911 and Tosevki Zati. I wish you success. And I was not listening. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else? If not, I'll thank you all very much for coming, and special thanks to our speakers, to Roland, to JD, to Yusuf, to my co-host Fred, and we will be back next month with an inner protocol update for May, and that's it. Thank you all for coming. Have a great day. We'll see you online.